What is up, everybody? Tyler here with the 100 Day Hustle. Welcome back, and we are in episode number three. This is actually kind of fun. I'm on my third episode already. Um, it is Christmas Eve. I even got the ugly Christmas sweater and uh, representation. Um, so here we are, December 24th. We're going to go over the top five reasons, uh, or excuse me, top five ways that me working in an HR for the past almost six years has really um, help amplify and speed up my um, entrepreneur, entrepreneur mindset. Um, yeah, so we'll get right into that. And if you stick around to the end, I'll actually have a bonus tip of what exactly um, it's one way that's really transformed me. Um, so just to kind of give a backstory of how I got into HR. Um, I had actually, once I got, uh, was medically discharged from the military, um, I you know enrolled in different, you know, interviewed for different jobs, went from one job, um, was laid off to another job, which was laying off. Um, so I've been laid off numerous times and they were bulk layoffs. It wasn't, you know, just me personally being a screw up. Um, so I thought, you know, I decided to think outside the box. I said, why, how can I, I've always, again, I've always thought, you know, wanted to be the top. I always wanted you to be the owner or something. So I figured the next best step would be human resources. Why? Well, human resources is always the group that would do the layoff. So I started thinking about it. I said, you know, what the hell do they know that the average pe- people don't? I said, well, clearly they, if I'm going to get laid off, I want to know about it before everybody else. So I said, you know, I'm going to work my way in the HR. So I pretty much, you know, changed my character. I you know, eat, sleep and breathe HR. I joined all the HR organizations, went to all the events, learned everything I could about HR. I started interviewing for some positions. Um, finally landed into one. And I'll kind of go over Number one is uh, not staying in your lane. What do I mean by that? Um, most positions that I've seen, you got to kind of, I mean, if you hire an engineer, their goal is to engineer things, whether it's civil, mechanical, uh, whatever in the hell they're working on. If you're a healthcare worker, you know, your goal um, is, you know, to buy, provide care to that. HR, you're kind of the jack of all trades, and you also need to be the master of everything. So you can't just stay in a generalist um, HR position. I mean, they do have generalist roles. Um, but what do I mean by not staying in the lane? So essentially, you need to understand the functions of how the whole business operates as an entity. Um, so that's really kind of helped me think from an entrepreneur. You know, you need to understand what everything makes it tick. I mean, the, the best analogy I can think of, usually when you work for a larger organization, it's a huge ship and it has a very tiny rudder. And you, you need to be able to, to, to steer that and figure out what makes this, this whole company move and operate. Um, number Number two reason uh, that's helped me uh, with my entrepreneurial growth and mindset, and that is embracing the suck. Um, you, as an HR professional, um, and even in an HR department, you have limited time, you have limited budgets, you have limited resources. So you need to make ends meet with as little as possible. You might be, um, have a huge project coming up, you're bidding on third party contracts, you're doing, you know, all sorts of plans for you know the next year, next quarter, whatever it may be. And you go, well, this would be great if I had a team I can outsource this to. Well, good luck with that, because either A, you don't have the budget, you don't have the resources, or you don't have the proper uh, staff to help you with that. So you need to embrace the suck. And it goes same for the entrepreneur. I mean, it's not, you know, I, it, it suck with a smile on your face. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, you know, you'll get used to it. I mean, being a small, small business owner, you need to figure out how to make shit work. I mean, you just can't, you're not going to have those resources. You're going to have limited funds. And, you know, if you're running a family or, or whatever, uh, you've got limited time. I mean, there's only 24 hours in a day. Make the most of it. Um, number three, and that is be the elephant in the room. We've all heard the saying. So what exactly do I mean by that? Um, you know, sometimes you'll have to just bring up the ugly. You know, you'll have a meeting and it's, and it's no sense of sitting here beating around the bush and bullshitting each other. Get to the point. It's, you know, hey, the uh, the quarterly earnings for this period are, are down. What's the issue? Well, since I've been, you know, looking at these, well, this program that we've had for the past 12 years has been nothing but, you know, overhead. It's not generating any type of income. And what's what's the benefit of it? Well, people don't want to hear that. It's been around for 12 years. Everyone's Everyone's kind of taken back by that. So you need to be the elephant in the room. The same will go for your entrepreneurial business or being an uh, entrepreneur. You need to be the elephant. You need to speak up, whether it's to your customers, to p- p- um, potential people you'll be doing business with. 
don't don't kind of hide up in your shell and just you know sit back. I mean, sit back to a certain you know ex, um, extent um, and observe. But you need you need to be able to speak up. And you know, kind of you know, for myself in the beginning, it was kind of it was uncomfortable. Um, but over the years, you know, I've definitely honed into it, and it's just you know just you know lay it on them, let them know what you know what you're thinking, and uh, just you know bring that to light. Four, and that is being able to um, identify successful employees and be able to properly reward them um, because you're going to want employee retention um, within the company as well as in your business. Um, so how do you identify that? Well, you need to build relationships with the managers because obviously they're going to have uh, people directly report to them. Um, so how can that translate into small business and an entrepreneur? Um, well, in many ways, I mean, obviously you want, if you're going to hire somebody, it takes a lot of time. You need to, you need to screen them, you need to onboard them, you need to train them, um, and you obviously need to retain them. Um, so you want to make people feel good. And I don't mean by just going out and giving everybody a generic gift. There's little things like, you know, what is Susan like? So well, Susie likes to, um, fuck, I don't know what some of her hobbies might be, but say, you know, maybe she loves the arts and crafts or something. So you actually go out there and get her a gift or something. I'm sure they, she's appreciative and stuff like that. Um, so that's number four. It's really helping me kind of think outside the box and it's retaining employees and being able to identify. Number five is the Number five is lead the movement. Um, it's so easy in business to get stuck in a way, you'll find a way that's working and you just wanna keep going with it. Well, the outside world is not doing that. So what are some ways, you know, I mean, the, the workforce is rapidly evolving, especially with social media and the times. I mean, news is literally in an instant is being, uh, is being portrayed and being accessed to us. So we need to keep up um, as a human resource professional. You need to be able to, you know, laws are changing. Um, taxes are changing. Um, the workforce itself is changing. You need to be ahead of that curve. Um, one example I can give you guys is um, application process. The unemployment rate is going down further and further and further each day, which is a good thing. The economy is booming right now. Well, if you've got an application that people have to jump through 45 hoops to get through just to get in the door to you know, be an applicant, guess what? They're going to somebody else. They're not going to want to work for you because it's a pain in the ass. You know, is that... Is that what you want to put off for the business? Um, so yeah, it's pretty much, I mean, you really got to, you know, think outside the box, kind of, you know, always be on your toes and you know, constantly learning every day. Um, actually, I've got a magazine around here somewhere. Um, every day you had to read. I actually got an HR uh, magazine that uh, part of the society that we're going through. Um, so yeah, and number six, and this is the bonus tip I'm going to give you guys. Um, So what is the bonus tip? Well, for those that stuck around, um, the top bonus tip I have and uh, actually top uh, resource that I've been able to uh, embrace while on my entrepreneur and HR journey, and that is negotiation. Um, that is a key fact that I've been able to, a key skill that I've been able to hone in uh, since, since I started working for myself and as well as uh, being in a human resources professional. Um, I negotiate every single day, and that's everything from, you know, when I was in there, I was negotiating with uh, potential employees, prospects, vendors, clients. Um, I mean, just every day you negotiate in your life, even if it's just with your, your kids, you know, say your kids want to go to bed earlier, or, or excuse me, if they want to stay up late, um, you kind of negotiate with them there. I mean, this is a skill um, that really will take your business to the next level, and you need to be practicing it every single day, almost like a workout. Every day I'm trying to get better at negotiation because I want to be able to um, close more deals that are in my favor, um, be able to scale the business and whatnot. So there you have it. Those are the top five ways that have human resources been able to help my entrepreneurial journey. Um, and plus a bonus tip for you guys. So I hope you like it. Um, make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe. And we'll be on to episode number four tomorrow. It's Christmas, but I still plan to do something for you guys. So see you guys on the other side. Take care.